Hi, let's talk about autoimmune diseases. Whenever someone comes into me with an autoimmune disease, and it doesn't matter whether it's multiple sclerosis or rheumatoid arthritis or ulcerative colitis or um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, I always ask, what was the triggering factor and what are the perpetuating factors in this situation? So the triggering factor, I'd say about 90% of the time is an infection. And this can be an infection like strep. Strep has long been known to cause a variety of different autoimmune diseases, a neurological autoimmune disease, a kidney autoimmune disease, skin autoimmune diseases. Um, but but the, the triggering factor can also be a tick-borne bacteria like Borrelia, for example, which causes Lyme disease. Or it can be a bacteria that's growing in your colon that shouldn't be there, or it's, or it's present in overabundance. So there's a lot of medical literature to support the, that, that imbalances in the gut microbiome can put you at risk for autoimmune diseases, such as rheumatological conditions or even inflammatory bowel diseases. Viruses have been known to trigger autoimmunity as well. Um, there's some link between cytomegalial virus and multiple sclerosis, for example, and also human herpes virus 6 and other types of autoimmune diseases. So, so anyway, whenever you have an autoimmune disease, you want to consider the possibility that you have an infection that needs to be treated. That could be a triggering factor in your situation. In t about 10% of the time, it's not an infection, it's something else. And I would say the bulk of that, the remaining 10% would be food allergies. And the food in the human diet that's most likely to lead to autoimmunity is gluten. So there's a lot of literature to support that gluten, because of the way it's been hybridized and in, in the United States, is a very different molecule than, than the gluten we evolved with. And it, it can act as a trigger for Hashimoto's thyroiditis, for example, um, uh, well, multi-system atrophy, which used to be called olivopontocerebellar atrophy, which is a neurodegenerative disease. So, so gluten has also been linked to inflammatory bowel diseases, some um, arthritic conditions. So be aware that gluten can be a common trigger. And then of the remaining percentage, I'd say other foods can potentially trigger autoimmune diseases. And, and then sometimes heavy metals, heavy metals, let's say from mercury amalgams in the mouth can leak down into the lymphatics and tag proteins rendering them slightly unrecognizable to the immune system. So the immune system thinks of them as foreign invaders, mounts an immune reaction to them, and that can, that can lead to some autoimmunity. So if it's not infections, food allergies, heavy metals, think other toxins as well. So when you look at triggering factors and you identify something, it's good to consider treating infection, uh, removing offending foods, detoxing out heavy metals and other chemicals. In terms of perpetuating factors, the primary perpetuating factor would be deficiencies of adrenal hormones because the adrenal cortical hormones are by nature immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory. And it's been shown that low levels of, the, of certain adrenal steroid hormones can make your immune system pro, prone to autoimmunity and actually allergies. And, and sometimes replenishing those hormones can actually calm an autoimmune reaction down. The other, the other thing that can be a perpetuating factor would be essential fatty acid deficiency. For example, if someone has a, a profound deficiency in essential fatty acids such as omega-3 fats, they, they're going to be more prone to autoimmunity and sometimes that's why when you can, you can modulate the expression of autoimmune disease by giving omega-3 fats sometimes and by giving omega-6 fats at other times, so fish oil or evening primrose oil. So there's a lot you can do when you have an autoimmune disease to, to modulate that. And I've been able to get rid of autoimmune diseases very, very often with patients and in many cases also manage them and control them without the use of medications. Thanks.